Hey everybody, welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Gardwell. And today we have a fun new deck. We're going back to the old Divinity Rulers. We're going to show off one more of them and just we're, we're just going to go have some fun with it. Um, but it is using a whole lot of the new cards, but we'll get into it. Uh, the deck name is called Shadow Games. And before we get into Shadow Games, I just remind everybody that we do have a Patreon. The link is down below, guys. Check it out. It really just takes an extra dollar to give us some love and support. We'd greatly appreciate it. With that, let's delve into the Lich and the Shadow Games. So, we are playing Lich, our boy, and he's got Divinity 10, Judgments for Black, Black, and 1, and Energizes for a Black. Simple. Yeah, simple super times. simple, have no front, other abilities, whatever. Uh, and then backside is a 6-12 with Bane and Divinity 10. And whenever he deals, whenever a non-token Darkness Resonator you control is put into a graveyard from the field, Put a 1-1 Darkness Skeleton token into play. So whenever a dude you control dies that's dark dies, you get a 1-1 dude to replace it. Yep. And he's just really strong because he's got Bane on him, so he can kill every other J ruler he needs to. And just doesn't matter. Yeah, pretty good. I love that ability. Yeah, and we do have a full Divinity 10. Uh, and the first card we got for it is Sandstorm. It is you pay red less to play this card from a rune area, and it deals 200 damage to each resonant your opponent controls. So it's just easy kill. And it's just kind of helpful. Small little board wipe, yeah. Uh, next up is Power of Immortality. It's a black and one for Divinity 1 Quick Cast. Uh, you pay one less to play this from a rune area. Target resonated against plus four plus zero, oh, and whenever it would be put into a graveyard from the field, put into the field rested under your control instead. So it saves one of your dudes and just brings it back into play. And if you're just playing a Darkness Ruler with this, you always want to pick this card. Pretty for sure. much. Uh, next up is Invitation to Purgatory. It's two black, Divinity three. Produce a red and a black, search your deck for a card, put it in the graveyard, and then you can, if you have Satan removed, you can go get another card and put it in the graveyard as well. Yeah. That's essentially what this is for, so you can have two extra cards in the graveyard, because this deck's all about the graveyard and recurring stuff, so. All right, and of course we have Harvesting Season. It's, uh, speaking of putting stuff in the graveyard, it's one and one black, Divinity three. You may pay one less to play this card in your from your rune area, and then put the top ten cards of your deck into your graveyard. Yeah. Simple we're, as that. We're playing from the graveyard, so we're going to get as many cards in there as we can. Yep. Uh, next is Freed from the Altar is his last Divinity uh, card. It is black and one. <clears throat> pay one less to play this from a rune area. Search your deck for a Darkness Resonator, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. You lose 400 life. So it's just a tutor that you can play whenever and go get what you need. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Oh, yeah. First Resonator is Fallen Angel of the Fiery Vengeance. It's one Darkness 4-4. Four, four. So, he has a lot of things. So, we treat Darkness Magic Stones. If you have Fire Stones, then you can tap for a red. Uh, you can tap this, banish this card, search your deck for named the same named card. And then you pay 200 life. Uh, remove this card from the graveyard, put it into the game. Oh, wait. From the game, target J Resonator gains plus zero, minus 400 until under turn. Yeah. So, essentially, he goes and replaces himself. And then once he's in the graveyard, you can remove him to kill a thing. Yeah. Which is super, super nice. Yeah. Being able to have spot removal from the graveyard that you don't have to pay for is really awesome. Especially since the target's Jays as well. Yeah. Next is Mikage Rea. She has one black quick cast 4-4 four, four with flying. Enter. Search your deck for a darkness card and put it into the graveyard. Vampires you control gain drain. And then whenever this card is banished as an additional cost of a mage art or an effect of a mage art, put this card into your grave, from your graveyard into your hand. So essentially, if you use this as a cost to pay for a mage art, you get this back. Yeah. And so you get to do it again and again and again. And cast it. gets ridiculous. Very ridiculous. Also, something that I didn't think was that great, but is ridiculous, is Lich the Resurrected Cleric. It's two darkness, one, seven, seven. It has Bane, so that's super good. And when it enters, you choose Harvest or Corrupt. If you choose Harvest, put a Resonator from your Graveyard into your hand. If you choose Corrupt, your opponent discards a card. So with this, you can just return this card after it dies, even if you sacrifice it and stuff, and just keep looping mm -hmm. that for sure. But if your J Ruler is Lich or have the other Lich, this card gains put into the Graveyard from the field. Choose Harvest or Corrupt. So when it dies, it does the exact same thing. Yeah. So it normally comes into play and does it once, since you're playing Lich, it does it again when it dies, which yeah. is real, real nice. For the most part of this deck, you're going to want to choose the corrupt part, so that way they don't have a hand, so they can't answer you when you get all your dudes back. Oh, yeah. Uh, next up is Athenia, DD of Harvest and Corruption. She is a black, green, and one for an 8-8. Uh, she enters, you choose Harvest or Corrupt. 
If you choose Harvest, recover three magic stones. If you choose Corrupt, all tap all stones your opponent's control. Uh, rune one, if you choose Harvest or Corrupt, you may choose both. Which you almost always have. And then you can pay a green, put any number of cards in your graveyard on the bottom of your deck. Or you can pay a black, remove all cards in your opponent's graveyard from the game, which that's the main part of why she's here. Because you don't want them to get their cards back with the card we play. Oh yeah, for sure. Next one is uh, my baby girl, my, my waifu, Estima. Uh, the Returnee of Hatred. It's two darkness and one, seven, six, flying. Enter, your opponent loses 500 life, and if there's three or more runes revealed, uh, you gain 500. So that's awesome. Pay 400, draw a card, only uh, your turn and once per turn. And same, pay 1,000, your opponent loses 500 life. And then the same thing, once per turn, your turn. Extremely powerful, amazing card. Yeah, she's really good because you only have to play to 15. Like, it sounds dumb, but that's that's what you do. Because you get to 15, you're like, cool, play her, you lose 5, and then I'm going to pay some life and you die. Yeah. It's just, it's just super nice. Uh, next up is Makage Seijiro. He is a black, 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 and a green for a 12-12 flying precision. Whenever a resonator dealt damage by this card is put into the graveyard, put it into the field under your control. It gains darkness and a vampire in addition to its other races. Uh, remove a stranger resonator from your graveyard. That doesn't matter because we're not having strangers, so yep. he's not going to have that ability. Um, and then enter, you can pay any amount of life. This card deals that much damage to that resonator whenever it comes into play your opponent controls. So... You're like, cool, you're 10-10, I'm going to pay 10 life, deal 10. And then since it dies by this dude, you get him. Yep. And it's a vampire, so your Makage Rea gives you gives it drain, so you get to not take life. Yeah, you kill a dude for free, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Now, of course, since we have the Purgatory card, we also have Satan, the, fallen, the god of the fallen. So it's black, red, 3, 14-14. Now bear with us, we're gonna have to like scroll down here. He's got a wall of text. A wall of text, but hopefully we'll just uh, round it out with you. So, when you're searching for your deck, you may pay a red or a black and reveal this card from your deck. If you do, remove this card from the game with a fallen counter on it. And then here's all the triggers. So, choose one. If you have 10 or more fallen counters on this card, you may choose both instead. But your opponent banishes a resonator, and then they banish up to the combination cost of how much uh, fallen counters you have. Equal to or greater. Equal to or greater, so which is really ridiculous. And then that, or you bring dudes back from the graveyard. Is it to the field? Or Equal to or less than. To your hand? To the field. To the field. Yeah. So if you have two or more, then you just win. Oh, you win more. Yeah, and then as long as he's removed, he gets uh, the little fall encounters, and he also gets an ability that if you would lose life, you put another counter on him. Yeah. So it's when you lose life so like your estima helps you trigger this your fallen angels help you trigger this pretty much makage seijiro helps you trigger this yeah all of those help you trigger that because you pay life to do all their abilities to do special things and he also gains the ability to be played from as long as he has fallen angel counter he can be played from that remove zone yeah that's correct uh the next guy we got is griffin racing across darkness it is a black green and four for a 12 12 flyer when this card into the field put the top two cards of your magic stone deck into the field rest into the field so you play this dude early that's this is the guy you want to get early because it helps you mana ramp into your other dudes next one uh belial the evil from the scriptures it's three darkness three 12 12 flying if your life is 1000 or less you may pay three less to play this card which is amazing enter destroy all non-fallen angel resonators and then whenever a resonator is put in the graveyard from the field this card deals 100 damage to your opponent so that means your dude their dude they just take damage yeah, he's super strong just because he can clear the board. Yeah, even definitely late game. And in this deck, you're not going to lose your entire board because you have a lot of Fallen Angels. And even if you do, most of your dudes that die, they have a trigger that you want them to die, like the, the Lich. Great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next up is the Part of True Power. It is a black and a green for a Mage Art with Remnant. As an additional cost to play this card, banish a Resonator, put target Darkness Resonator from your graveyard into the field. So this is your main target for... This is your main card for getting Griffin early. Yes. And you use it on your Makage Rea so you get it back so you don't lose any value and you get to go get more stuff. And they just a nice giant loop. Next, of course, is Dance of the Shadows. It's uh, one and three. It's a mage art and it has Remnant as well. So put Target res Resonator from your graveyard in the field at the next of, it, of turn. And the next end of turn, remove it from game. Yeah. So, end of their turn is the best time to do this, like the very, very end of turn, because you're like, cool, bring this dude back. It gets to sit until the next end of turn, which would be the end of my turn. Yes. So, you get to attack with that dude. 
and being able to have an instant cast Belial is kind of ridiculous because you're just like, cool, bring back Belial, kill all your board. I, I don't care. Yeah. Even if you just have to do that and it dies at the end of turn, it, does, yeah. it did its job. Yeah, it's worth it. All right, next one is Makage Sudro's Game of Dreams. It's two green, two darkness, major as well. So each player puts all resonators from their graveyard into the field. Then each player banishes all resonators, not put in the field this way. It's cute. It's really powerful. You know what you're doing. Yeah, so you have a lot of big dudes in your graveyard, so you don't care. Because you're going to harvesting season and reveal all the stuff. And then yeah. you'll be like, hey, cool, return all my dudes. And sure, your Belial is going to come into play and kill some of your dudes at the same time. But it's worth it, because you're going to get a lot of Fallen Angels and kill their board. Yeah. Um, also, since it says banishes all your resonators, it's still, that just means your dudes die. So all your liches still trigger and do all their fun things. You just you get all the death triggers. And with Athenia, it makes this card so much better because you just remove all their graveyard so they don't get anything anything back. You just get to have all your free dudes. Yeah. It's ridiculous and pretty pretty awesomely powerful. Yeah, it is pretty nice. The stones are a little rough cuz I just I, there's only there's only one set of black green stones for me cuz I'm not playing Rizard. But, I mean, you could go Rizard if you wanted to, but it's whatever. Yeah. Um, but it is Magic Stone of the Black Silence, which is the uh, black red stone, or the black green stone. And then we have Magic Stone of the Scorched Bales, which is the black red stone. Uh, we have Magic Stone of the Undead, which is essentially our free black stone. But you can tap, put the top card of your deck into the graveyard so it can help mill yourself to get you more things. And then we have an extra wind stone, wind magic stone, just because you need the green. But mostly you're going to want the, the black green stone turn one if you get it, hopefully. Uh, but we don't really do sideboards, but we do have honorable mentions now. And the only honorable mention really for this is Arthur, the Dead Lord of Vengeance. He has two black and two for a 10 10. Other darkness resonators you control get plus two, plus two. Non darkness resonators gain minus two, minus two. Yep. And then you remove three resonators from your graveyard from the game, put this card from the graveyard into your hand. So yeah, he can bring himself back, but when he comes into play, that's the best part for him because he just helps you kill your kill your opponent's dudes and yeah. your dudes get bigger. And obviously you don't want it in main board because it pumps up your enemy's darkness dudes. Yeah, it does it does help their dudes too. So just so. know that when you're playing this guy that it's kind of a, a catch twenty two. But yeah. it's worth it if it's if it's worth it. Uh, the deck list will be down below. Go check it out, guys. It's it's gonna be super fun. I've always loved cards that bring all the dudes back from the graveyard because yeah. I mean they're super fun. It regardless of what happens, it makes the game super interesting because you're like I don't know what's gonna happen. But we're super excited to play this deck, and we'll see y'all again next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below, then subscribe to our channel, and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Uh, thank you, Dwayne Higgs. And thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.